So today I'm going to show you how to create a visualization of country of origin of author data. So a bibliometric analysis of where, where authors are from, which countries they're from. And so I'm going to show you several different ways that I've used either creating a map like this, creating something more like this, both in Tableau and also directly in Web of Science and Scopus and in bar chart form, I forgot to mention. So let's start off in Web of Science. Um, so let's say I want to do a search. I've already conducted it, but I'm looking for climate change and migration in Latin America. And I'm interested to see where are the authors who are writing about this from? Are they from Latin America? Are they from somewhere else? How does that distribution play out? So one really cool thing is that you can go directly here in Web of Science to analyze results. And while that's loading, I'll just mention one note, which is that the, the place that this data is pulled from is the institution location that authors submit when they submit a paper. So it's a potential that, you know, say someone who is actually from Latin America originally, but they are now either a professor or a researcher or a practitioner uh, somewhere else in the world, but are doing research in either their home country or a related country, that won't show up in this analysis. It's just the institution that they work at now. So anyways, I want to show you here that you can look at lots of different types of things here. Obviously, we are focused on country. Um, so it took me directly here because I, I came here before. But when you open it, it'll first take you to Web of Science categories, and then you can look play around with these. But as you'll see here, if you scroll down, it'll actually show you all of the list and the percentage and how many people are from there and how many times it shows up. And so you can decide here if you only want your visualization to show a few of them and then hit update and it will just show those in this. If not, it's just going to give you, you know, kind of the number that you can choose as the top ones and, and you could do it that way. And you can also in here switch it to bar graph and that's another option. Now, if you're happy with this and maybe it's just for a PowerPoint or, you know, this is just great already the way that it is here and you're happy with these colors, you can just directly go to download and it'll download this as a PNG and you can input it directly. So that's the great thing about these databases. Say we want to be a little bit more specific, change the colors, have different kinds of visualizations. We're going to go here and do all data rows in case we had more and then we would download. So then the other thing is in Scopus, you can do a similar thing. So I wanted to show you that too. In this case, we're gonna to go to analyze search results on the left. So in Web of Science, it's on the right. Here it's on the top left. And again, it shows you lots of different ways to analyze. So it pops up and you're on the year. You can do author. You can also do the actual institution that they put. So that might be interesting if, if you're curious, maybe are most people in uh, private organizations, public universities, kind of how does that shake out? And this might be important depending on what topic it is you're researching. So we are gonna look at country or territory. And again, it gives you the same option to kind of add some more to your chart. On this side, you can add all of them but obviously it'll automatically add the top however many that have the most. And so from here, again, you can either export this right here and directly download the chart to a zip file. That would be this option. Or we can export the data to a CSV file. So we would hit export. I've already done it, so I'm not going to take our time to wait for the download, but that's where we would do it. So you know, maybe that's great and you already have your charts, awesome. The other place to play around with it is in Tableau. And the way that I do that, so we're gonna import our data. So we have a new data source and to a file, I usually go to more um, and then wait while it loads all of the data. Here we are, the Scopus country data. So now it has the data and as you can see here, the way that it opens it or the way that it creates it is there's about seven lines that are meaningless to us, right? It's just telling us what it is that we searched or they're meaningful in terms of our notes and our records, but maybe not so much in terms of our analysis. And so 
What you can actually do to remove these is just use data interpreter over here and it will just directly take all of those out in one second. And so you'll see it has the country name and then F2 just means the amount of people that were from there. And so of course we can just come in here and go to rename um, and say, you know, count. And so there we have that. So now let's create a worksheet. So we're going to go over here to sheet one and it'll already have kind of the different, um, you know, table, the column names up here. And so let's see, we're going to do um, columns here and we said count was here. So we just throw it into columns or rows. We could do it backwards. See, do it this way and country and then it would kind of show up the other way but let's just play around with doing the count and country um whoops i think i originally um let me just remove it and do the count so you have to play around with it um a little bit so that's how we have a bar chart but now say we want to do a map so let's click on this map and we're like, okay, so this is giving us the, um, a dot that is scaled to the count, right? So this dot is much bigger than these little dots over here based on the count. So maybe that's how you like it and this is the way you wanna do it. You can always come over here to color or size and change the size of the dot so that maybe um, you know they're more visible on your screen or change the color to be in line with the colors in your other figures that kind of thing but let's see another way to do it would actually be this kind of map where they fill in the whole country based on the count in terms of the darker is more and lighter is less obviously and so maybe we're like okay we see that these are different right i can kind of see but they're not like super starkly different and so maybe i would come around and play in color and do edit colors here and kind of give it either a higher step in terms of um, more colors or we could you know go to advance and actually we could change the color palette here and do completely different ones um, let's try that right so now we have completely different maybe that's not super meaningful especially because these we still can't see but all I'm saying is go in here play around with it and and that's how you do that you can also you know keep messing around and you can see okay here are um, Again, I feel like the color, let's actually remove the color filter and whoops, now I've removed it completely, which is not what I wanted to do. Let me just change that back and just go back to edit and let's just do the automatic one again. Okay, so now I have it back here and I can kind of see how it shakes out. Again, we can always edit this like I was just doing and sometimes it takes a little figuring out but again you can just come in here and play around and see okay so this one is giving me kind of the different sizes so that might be interesting and we can change the sizes so the name would actually show up in here so we can see it in all of them and mess around with the colors so that might be another interesting way to visualize where people um, are from so again, this was just a really brief overview of how to visualize bibliometric data in terms of the country of origin of the author or the country, not of origin actually, the country where the author um, is and is working from. So just a few ways to do it. I'm sure there are many more ways out there and other software that can do this. So if you guys have any suggestions for other ways to do it, please leave it in the comments so that we can all learn from it. And if there's anything else that I can help visualize, let me know. Thank you.